For the next seven nights, we're staying in one of the biggest suites on board Royal Caribbean's Jewel of the Seas as we sail through the South Caribbean. In this video, I'll be covering what the experience is like, the perks that come along with the room, and whether this is all worth it. This would usually cost over $7,500, but we paid a lot less than this. Stay tuned to find out how. Our journey begins in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where we've just spent the last few days relaxing by the pool, exploring the old town and the forts. Royal Caribbean uses the old Pan America Pier for their departures, so after checking out of our hotel, we made our way down, dropped off our bags and joined a massive queue. Thankfully, it didn't take us too long to realise that there was a separate, much shorter queue for sweet guests, which was a massive relief as it was absolutely boiling outside and just being forced to stand out in the sun to wait wasn't ideal. So we were very quickly making our way on board and getting pretty excited. This was our first time boarding the Royal Caribbean cruise and only our second ever cruise after trying out one with Virgin Voyages last year. We were actually supposed to be sailing out of San Juan with Virgin Voyages this time, but after they cancelled that cruise, we made a last minute rebooking onto Royal Caribbean. The Centrum, as the name suggests, is the focal centre point of the ship when you first get on board. It's a really grand area with multiple bars and the cafe shooting just off from it, and there was always some form of entertainment going on in the ground floor. You'd always find people sat around in these chairs at the bottom, and also on the chairs that are on each of the different floors as well, so always a really popular space. Next stop for us was to head over to the Windjammer Buffet for some lunch. Now thankfully as we got on board in good time, the Windjammer was pretty quiet so it gave me a chance to walk around, see all the food without having to worry about being in long queues. Uh, quite a different story when we walked through here later when the place was absolutely packed out. So really good opportunity being on board first as sweet guests. As you can see, really wide range of food available, um, mixed quality, um, which I'll get onto in a bit later, but plenty of options. You'll not go hungry. I think our favourite area of the Windjammer though is this outdoor seating area to the aft of the ship. Gives you a really good um, views of the area. Um, obviously at the moment we're docked in San Juan, so that's the view that we have. Um, but it's just nice to get some alfresco dining. And we did often find that this area was quite a lot quieter than the indoor space. I guess a lot of people just like to sit in the aircon, but when you are out at sea and on the move, um, it was nice and cool out there and just a really nice space. For my lunch, I went for a random mix of food um, and then also an ice cream and chocolate cake for dessert. Kelly had a bit more of a balanced meal and a healthy option. After eating, we grabbed our freestyle cups that come with our drinks package and then went to explore the ship whilst it was still quiet. On deck 11, the same deck as the Windjammer, you also have the pool. It's a really big open area, decent sized pool and a couple of hot tubs. It looks really nice at the moment when it's really quiet, but I will say it was always packed out, especially with kids, unfortunately. Further back on deck 11, you have the solarium. Again, it was always a busy area. I personally don't really understand the appeal. Maybe it's just the Britishness in me. I always want to be outside in the sun when I'm sunbathing, not just sat indoors in a lounger. Uh, the solarium was also where you'd find your pizza. And when docked in port, if there was good weather, they would actually open this roof, and that's when I would actually like to be in there. Going back further on deck 11 was the spa and then up one level to deck 12 is where you find the gym. And the gym's actually quite an important one to us whilst we're travelling. I don't tend to feel good if I've been eating a load of food, having a few drinks and just lounging around all day so I do like to make sure I stay active on the cruise um, and having a good gym made a real big difference. It is really well equipped, I will say for the weight equipment, there does tend to just be one of each thing, but there's enough variety that if someone's on the machine you want to use, there should be something else available, and there's always plenty of cardio stuff available. There are also plenty of classes that would take place in that central area, if that's your thing. Personally, I just like to do my own thing with the weights and cardio. Um, nice to not be on a timetable and just do it when it makes sense to me, especially on port days. Um, you can just time it around what works best. But yeah, overall, really happy with the equipment that was provided. Outside of the gym as well, and you could potentially see some of it there, there was a running track. Um, didn't see too many people running on here. You do get a few people that do in the mornings. I think part of the problem with this running track, though, is you do have loungers all around it, and a parts of it, um, it can be quite congested, so maybe not the best for actually running. We then went down a few decks to check out some of the indoor areas, starting with this cinema. It seemed like a decent enough space and there was always some modern films going on, but I don't really see the appeal in necessarily doing that whilst you're on holiday. Especially while sailing in the Caribbean, sitting in a dark room didn't really seem like the thing to do. Uh, next to that there is the sports bar, and then walking through there it leads into the casino. 
Now, I'm not a big gambler. Um, I did have a week in Vegas about 10 years ago where I think I ended up uh, winning about $600 and I've not really wanted to gamble since. I quite like the idea of staying ahead. Um, but it was really, really busy, this casino. I really was shocked at just how popular it gets in the evenings. Quite a few bars on board. This one is the Safari Bar. Nice enough space and there's a few other bars that were decent as well. None of them really stood out to us as being incredible, um, but there were some decent ones around. We then went back upstairs to lie out on a lounger for a bit and just relax before we decided to explore some of more of the outdoor areas. The ship has a mini golf course, pretty basic but still nice to have it. There's also a climbing wall, there's a kids water park area but very small, only a couple of slides. And there's also a basketball court. Most of these activity areas were very busy during most of the cruise unfortunately, uh, but when you could get them they were good fun. Um, and moving downstairs there was also a kids area. By now, most passengers have started to get on board, the ship was getting a bit busier, so we decided to go see if our cabin was available for us. Thanks to an upgrade, which I'll explain a bit more about later, we were booked in our owner's suite on deck 10. We had slight concerns about the cabin's location being right beneath one of the sections of the windjammer, but we never actually heard any noise from this. So welcome to the Brown Suite. It's a massive 532 square foot room, along with a 57 square foot balcony. To the left as you come in, there's tons of storage space, including two double wardrobes. Inside these were our robes, which are nice and comfortable. And there were just way more storage sections than we would ever need, even in just this one area, more storage than we could possibly need. There was a coffee machine. However, we were only given one bottle of water to fill that coffee machine with, and it wasn't actually restocked at any point during the cruise, which I did think was pretty poor. There's a little dining table area here, and then further on, we've got a massive lounge area. This big corner sofa also converts into a bed if you did have more people staying with you. There's a nice big TV, which we primarily used for looking at the map of where we were. And one thing I thought was great is that this actually swivels around to face the bed. So if you're lying in bed and want to watch some TV, you can swivel this around to face there. Really clever design. The bed was big and comfortable. Really enjoyed the sleep here. There were a couple of small bedside tables, unfortunately no charging or anything on these, but there were plenty of charging ports over at this desk, which again, tons of storage, loads of drawers and cupboards. As I said, way more storage space than we would need. The cabin decor was a little dated, um, but still having that amount of space was just so incredible. Nice big bathroom too, with two sinks, toilet, bidet, Again, a good amount of storage behind these mirrors. There's a jacuzzi bath and a really good shower as well. Uh, it doesn't look like much the shower, but it was actually a really good pressure, always a good temperature, so really enjoyed that. And another absolute highlight of the cabin is this massive balcony area. Space for two lounges at this side. And then there was also a table and two chairs at this side. A really great spot to just hang out whilst we're sailing and especially at sunrise and sunset. After we'd been on the ship for about five hours, all our bags had finally arrived and we were able to unpack. We also got a letter in the cabin outlining all of the different perks that came with the suites. Um, I'd recommend pausing if you want to read all of them. The main one I'd call out is the concierge lounge and the free drinks and breakfast options that come along with that. Uh, we also got some nice chocolate strawberries delivered to the room as well as a little fruit plate. After unpacking our bags and getting changed, we decided to head up to the concierge club for a drink. This is a sweets only area that has lots of little snacks available in the evenings. Um, all the food in here was really, really nice as well and just great to have a few little light bites before dinner. And of course, there was the cocktail bar with all the drinks between 5 and 8 p.m. completely free. The staff in here are absolutely brilliant as well, particularly the main bartender Jarvis, always made a great drink and was really nice and chatty. And we made a habit of coming here basically every day. And after a couple of drinks, we decided to head down to the main dining room for our first evening meal on board. The main dining room is a nice space, although we did feel a bit close to the people next to us. Um, you did find that sometimes if you were next to someone that wasn't particularly chatty, you'd see them kind of listening in on our conversations, which wasn't the best. The menu seemed to have some pretty good looking options. To start, Kelly went with the spinach and artichoke dip, and I went for the Caesar salad, um, and we also got some bread and butter served alongside this. And of course, a few more cocktails. The starters were nothing special, to be honest. I was expecting a bit more, and same for the main course as well. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't anything particularly impressive. 
dessert though was absolutely delicious. That's one thing that Royal Caribbean seemed to do really well throughout the cruise, was really good quality and tasty desserts. After dinner, we headed back up to the top deck to witness the sail away out of San Juan. Although it was dark, um, it was still nice to be up here to watch the sail away and we were still treated to some good views um, of the nighttime sailing away. This was one of the main forts in San Juan there. The wind though was absolutely crazy. Um, it was quite funny watching Kelly's hair because it was going almost vertically up at a lot of points, um, as you can see in the video here. Um, so we didn't stay out for too long, but it was quite fun whilst we were out there. And once we'd sailed away a good distance, we decided to head back inside and find a bar for a quick drink. We didn't stay out long, we were already pretty wiped from a long day. So after a quick drink in this bar near the centrum and watching a few people dance for a little bit, we decided to head back to the room and get to bed. It had been a great first day and we were really looking forward to the rest of the cruise. We woke up early the next morning to a beautiful sunrise out on the balcony. It's just such a great way to start the day, just standing or sitting out here and just watching the sun come up. And after watching the sunrise for a bit, we started to get hungry and decided to head to the wind jam for some breakfast. As you can see, there's absolutely loads on offer, loads of hot food items, there was sweet food as well. Um, the donuts we found on board were particularly good quality. I don't know if they're necessarily good quality by American standards, but certainly compared to what we get into the UK, I really enjoyed these. Uh, also plenty of fruits and things like that around too. We sat out in our favourite spot to the aft and enjoyed a good breakfast. I went for as close as I could find to a full English with bacon, sausage, hash browns and scrambled eggs. And Kelly went for some fruits and a few bits of hot food as well. I then finished that up with a donut and some pineapple. Feeling pretty well fed, we then decided to take the lift down to find the cafe and go get some nice coffees. Cafe Latitudes I believe was on deck 5. And the coffee served there is from Starbucks and it is an extra charge, but nothing was too pricey so I did think it was worth paying for. There was free coffee available in the Windjammer, uh, not the best quality stuff but just your standard filter coffee. Uh, we did also obviously have access to the espresso machine in our room and there was also a coffee machine up in the uh, suite lounge. Um, but for certain types of coffee, if you just want something in particular, um, the Cafe Latitudes was the place to be. Uh, for me, I wanted an iced mocha. Um, and I wasn't going to get that anywhere else, so well worth paying for. We drank our coffees on a nice walk around the promenade deck. This was a really nice spot to walk, uh, much better than the running slash walking track that was up on deck 12. Um, just because there's no other people around, it was always really quiet around here. Um, lots of good space, great views of the sea. Um, you can also come up to the helipad area, which is pretty cool. We did this walk quite a few times on our cruise and I think we only ever really saw members of staff out here. Um, I don't know why that was, I don't know if people just weren't really aware that the area was here. Um, but yeah, no one ever really seemed to walk out here, so if you did want a nice quiet spot to walk and just look out to sea, uh, this is a great place to be. I can imagine if you're in an inside cabin as well, it'd be really nice to come out here and just have a quiet space without other people where you can get those lovely sea views. But we used this walk to wake ourselves up while we had our coffees. And then after that we decided to head up to the gym for a proper workout. After which it was of course time for breakfast number two. Uh, we went back up to the wind jam, we just got something light. Um, I went for pancakes, bacon and sausage. Kelly went for some uh, French toast, some hash browns, some avocado on toast. We then made our way up to the concierge lounge to see this during the daytime as well as grabbing a coffee. Uh, we saw that they put out a few little light bites to eat as well which was great. Although we'd had plenty to eat already. As you can see, it's not a massive place, the suites area, but there's not a huge number of passengers that are in the suites and it never got crowded. There was a coffee machine that we could help ourselves to at any time, and this was a great benefit. After this first day, we did find that we came up here most mornings to grab a coffee and a light bite to eat. And we then made our way back out on deck to do some sunbathing before lunch. We were really lucky on this trip and we did get pretty great sunshine almost all the time we were there. The pool area was always crowded, but we never really struggled to find lounges to sit on and we tend to just go to some of the more quiet areas for that. For lunch we were back in the Windjammer. Not a huge number of dining options on board that you don't have to pay extra for, um, so we did tend to eat lunch in the Windjammer most days. I had a random assortment of things for my main course, um, and similarly for the dessert, looking around here everything looked great so I just ended up getting a plate full of everything that we decided to share. 
and get a taste of everything. The afternoon was mostly spent sunbathing, but we did take the occasional break here or there, for example, to watch the belly flop contest. But mostly spent our time relaxing before it was time to go get ready for formal night. It was a bit of a mix around the ship of how seriously formal night was taken. Um, we didn't bring particularly fancy clothes for it, and I was probably more so dressed smart casual, but I was quite relieved to see I wasn't the only one. There were plenty of people around the ship who were just in shirt and trousers, um, so thankfully that was fine. Of course, before dinner, stopped by at the concierge lounge to grab a couple of cocktails and some nibbles. And it was then time for our dinner. And unfortunately the service that evening was pretty terrible. Everything was running really slowly. For our starters, I had the wedge salad and Kelly had the French onion soup, but they didn't actually bring her a spoon, they just brought her a knife and fork. And trying to get a server's attention was impossible, so we just abandoned it. Uh, thankfully the main course was really good, but everything took so long that after that we just wanted to get back to the room, get to bed and just relax. Thankfully the turndown service had already happened by the time we got back and were able to get to sleep. The following day was our first day in port. We were really excited and on our port days we tended to get into a bit of a routine. We'd wake up for the sunrise and watch that on the balcony. We'd then watch us pull into port somewhere, see the other ships that were arriving and usually get some pretty great views from our balcony. After watching those views, we'd then get some kind of coffee, whether that was from the pods in our room, a coffee from the concierge lounge, or occasionally one from the Cafe Latitudes, and we'd then get a light breakfast to start the day. So sometimes that would just be a little snack from the concierge lounge, like a donut, or maybe a small bite to eat from the Windjammer. Once we'd had a little bite to eat, we'd then head up to do some kind of exercise, and that varied depending on day to day and how much time we had. But we'd usually start with some kind of walk, maybe around the promenade deck, or sometimes going out on the walking track. Other times we'd go play a bit of basketball if the court was free, and then we'd usually head to the gym for a proper workout. But this depended on the time, sometimes we were in port quite early and would save all that till later in the day. And after our workout we'd go for a proper breakfast, so sometimes this would be in the windjammer just for speed, but we did also, as sweet guests, get access to a more sit-down formal dining held in Chop's Grill. That was the steak restaurant on board, and it was a nice setting, and good to have a proper sit-down meal, but I will say the food they served, it was definitely better quality than you had in the Windjammer, but it was basically the same items, and it wasn't too different. And then after the breakfast, it was time to head out into port and enjoy the day. Our first port was Barbados, and it was our first time here. We were booked on a catamaran tour that involved sailing around the island with some free drinks and then sailing with a shipwreck before finally swimming with turtles. And as fun as it was riding around on the boats in the Caribbean, drinking cocktails, the absolute highlight had to be swimming with the turtles. I was treated to a really up close view when this turtle decided to surface really close to me and it was just an incredible trip. After the snorkeling we were supposed to be getting taken to a beach for a bit, but because the catamaran actually broke down for a period of time, um, they didn't have time to do that so they actually took us straight back to the cruise ship. We still wanted to go to a beach though so after we got dropped off we went by foot to one of the local beaches. It had rained shortly before this and most people had rushed back to the ship, but once the weather improved we went out and we were actually there on our own which was a lovely time. The next two days we were in Trinidad and Tobago. In Trinidad we took a tour to Maracas Beach. Here we just mainly relaxed by the beach on the lounger all day. And we also tried out the local specialty food of bacon shark. We topped it off with quite a spicy sauce and it was actually really really nice. The following day in Tobago we went to Pigeon Point Beach. The colour of the water here was incredible and it was just such a nice beach to relax on for a few hours.
In St. Lucia, we decide to do a zip lining tour through the jungle. And then at our final port in St. Martin, we went to Maho Beach, where you can see the airplanes come to land at the local airport as they fly overhead the beach. There's also a nearby cocktail bar, which gives a great vantage point of the planes coming in to land as well. Once back on board from our excursions, we'd usually go get a light bite to eat, either at the Windjammer or maybe a slice of pizza in the solarium. And because the port days were sometimes quite short, we'd often have a good few hours in the afternoon back on the ship, so sometimes we'd go and just sunbathe. Other times we'd do some of the activities on board, like the mini golf course. And other times we'd just go and relax on our balcony, maybe watch the sail away or watch some of the other ships sail away as well. And after that, we'd usually try and find a good spot to watch the sunset. Obviously our balcony was a great spot for this most days, because the sunset was often on this side of the ship for us, which was great, so sometimes we'd just lounge out here. And other times we would go up to the concierge lounge so we could watch the sunset with some cocktails and a few nibbles. I think we must have saved a fortune on drinks by having access to this concierge lounge. The only drinks package we paid for was for soft drinks and we didn't find ourselves spending a lot of money on other drinks around the ship. We weren't drinking late often and 5 till 8 was a perfect time for us to be getting a few cocktails. After cocktail hour we'd go for dinner somewhere and we did mix it up between the wind jammer and the main dining room. Every now and again where we felt like more of a sit down meal we'd go to the main dining room but because the service often wasn't that great we did find ourselves drawn to the wind jammer quite a bit. And sometimes even when we'd go for a starter and a main in the main dining room we'd find ourselves coming up to the wind jammer for dessert anyway just because there was a better variety of options up there and we liked the idea of having a plate with a lot of different things on it and just trying a bit of everything. When we did it in the main dining room though, although the service was slow, the food was actually really good, so I can't complain too much. On our final night, since we'd spent very little on board, we decided to treat ourselves to a meal at Chop's Grill. This is the steak restaurant and everything we ate was absolutely brilliant. It was a four course meal, huge portions and everything was cooked really nicely. My steak was cooked perfect and I really enjoyed it. The service in here was great too, and I also had my favorite cocktail the whole trip. I ordered myself as toasted marshmallow old fashioned and it was one of the nicest drinks I had. Before we left I grabbed another one to go and we took it to the theatre. There were shows going on in the theatre every night of the cruise but none of them had really taken our interest, however we noticed one on the last day that said it was a mix of acrobatics and comedy so we decided to give it a shot as that sounded a bit more up our street. It certainly helped as well that we'd had a good few cocktails before going but it was a fun show and it was a great way to end our final evening on board. We didn't know exactly what to expect from Royal Caribbean, but we'd really enjoyed our time on board and I think a lot of that was due to the suite that we had and some of the perks that came along with that. I think we would sail with Royal Caribbean again, but we'd definitely try and get a suite if we could. Speaking of which, let's talk about how we booked this and how much it all cost. At the time of booking, a suite was just too far out of our price range. In fact, the suite we ended up staying in was listed at £7,000 at the time of booking. Although from looking at other sailings, the typical price range seems to be closer to about £6,500. So we instead booked a balcony with extra space. The fare for that, including taxes, charges and also the tips, came to £2,714. Now a month or so before the sailing, we then got an email offering the opportunity to bid for an upgrade. Now all the minimum bids at this point seemed quite high so we didn't bother, but then about a week before the sailing, we got another email with another offer of bids. All the minimum bids on this email were a much lower price point, and I thought, you know what, this might be worth doing. We settled on an amount of £300 each, and we actually got a confirmation the very next day that our bid had been successful. This meant we'd secured the suite for less than half of what they were charging. Now, this being Royal Caribbean, that wasn't the final price we ended up paying. There are a lot of things on board that you do need to pay extra for. 
Wi-Fi, for example, is not included even in our suite, so we had to pay extra for that. We also paid for the soft drinks package, which gave us access to unlimited soft drinks through the Coke Freestyle machines. We also paid for our excursions, and there was also additional onboard spend for any drinks that we bought outside of the concierge lounge, as well as our final dinner at Chop's Grill, which actually cost a lot more than we were expecting. Uh, the listed price doesn't seem too bad, but then of course they add on the taxes and service charges, and it ends up being quite a lot. So final total, £4,613. It's expensive, but for two people, considering what we got, it feels like a great deal to me. But let me know what you think in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video as well and you like the cruising content, uh, we do have more coming up later this year. We've got a cruise with Virgin Voyages in a seriously sweet um, in the next couple of months. Um, and thanks very much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you in the next one.